All right, good morning. Wow, the lights are really bright here. Okay, so I'm Kaisa Vänänen Vainio Mattila, as Timpa just uh, kindly introduced me. Um, I'm with the Tampere University of Technology. Uh, are there people in the room who have never been to Finland before? Quite a few, great. So then I just mentioned that Tampere is the second largest city of Finland. It's about 180 kilometers north from uh, uh, Helsinki. So come and visit sometimes. It's a really lovely place as well. Okay, so my topic here today is, um, is uh, user experience in ubiquitous systems. And this is pretty much also my research field. So I've been uh, with Tampere University of Technology for about 10 years. I've been also with Nokia uh, Research for about 10 years. I left already, um, well, years ago. So uh, I also have this sort of industrial background or industrial research background. Um, and uh, now I'm working in the Department of Pervasive Systems in our university. So we were recently restructured and, and that's our current context. And uh, yeah. So as I mentioned, my topic is user experience. And just to explain briefly what I mean by that, um, we try to look at the user uh, viewpoint from the very sort of like broad angle. So of course we have to understand uh, how to make those different systems efficient and, and usable and, and so on. But we should also try to understand uh, much more broadly what it is that these systems offer to the users. What kind of experiences can they, can they give to? give to the end users and, and that's at least one of the of my uh, my uh, main main points that uh, we have to kind of bring this user experience into these novel systems in order to make them uh, meaningful to the users and therefore in the, at least in some time scale to make them uh, a market success so both the utility and the pragmatic goals but also the sort of the emotional goals and how to how these systems what kind of pleasure can they give to the end users so another way of looking at this is, is this sort of uh, familiar model from, uh, from uh, Jordan, uh, which sort of says that, okay, first we have to offer the right functionality, then we, we, then we have to make it usable, so easy to use, and then we still have to build something on top of that, something that really makes it uh, pleasurable for the end users. Of course, there are contra contra contradictory examples. If you think about, for example, this product, it's probably not very usable. It's a citrus presser. Uh, on the other hand, it can still give pleasure. But uh, most of the time, uh, it's important to make these products usable as well as um, then build something on top of that. Another picture uh, by Verpiroto uh, kind of shows you the same thing. So we had this kind of like, we can, we can make phone calls even with this very first bulky device here. But to sort of um, make it usable, it has to be sort of more, more uh, designed in a more user-oriented way. And then, of course, to add, add uh, additional sort of uh, characteristics to it, make, hopefully makes it more, more experiential. <coughs> oh, sorry. Um, so, uh, to how to link this to the ubiquitous computing? Um, so the characteristics from the, from the sort of like a very generic perspective, this is not an exhaustive list, but uh, sort of lays out the sort of the, uh, the, the field. So of course we have this uh, wiser uh, vision of, of disappearing computing and how sort of things are embed embedded in the environments. And this allows us to go beyond the desktop um, to sort of like into the sort of ubiquitous environments where there are technologies are available even, even without us first noticing it. Uh, so there are these sort of smart spaces where, where people can interact with uh, different, different proactive functionalities. And also one, one important aspect from the end user viewpoint is sort of that these object, everyday ob objects beca become more interactive. And so they sort of are augment, augmented with these different, different um, uh, digital information and functionality and that can and will uh, hopefully give, uh, give the end users more, more meaningful, meaningful uh, interactivity in these, in these systems. And last but not least is the whole concept of context awareness, uh, using different types of sensors, uh, starting with the location sensors, but using many other types of sensors to, to make these systems more sort of specifically um, uh, uh, suitable for specific context. So of course uh, a mobile device is one way of doing this, but uh, of course other, other approaches as well, uh, exist as well. So how can these uh, ubiquitous systems uh, affect user experience? So this beyond the desktop idea will allow us to sort of go into the world and explore our environment in a, in a very new way. 
So this gives us uh, or the users some, some um, new opportunities for, for experiencing these technologies and, and their functionalities. And this sort of hidden uh, technology, on the other hand, uh, allows the users to sort of focus on the, on the sort of the um, meaningful things, the, uh, things that are meaningful to them so that they don't have to fiddle with the technology. I'm sure we all have, <laughs> have these experiences of, of having to sort of focus on the technology when we really want to do, do something, something meaningful in the, in the current situation. So these augmented, augmented environments will allow us to have uh, new special experiences with, uh, with uh, everyday objects. I will have actually some examples of these in a minute. And, and again, um, this context awareness will, uh, will offer end users sort of efficient uh, usage of the right functionality in that, those specific contexts. So in the way, uh, if we build these, uh, build these technologies in a, in a sort of user-centered way, we can sort of really start giving these new types of, uh, new types of experiences to the end users. And of course, still all these uh, solutions should offer, offer end users some real value, not just some novelty value, but some real value in the long run. So here's a kind of like a counter example. Um, I'm not sure if you can all read that, but of course we can do many things with the technology. It doesn't mean that we should do it, or perhaps we can still do it in a purpose of trying to explore things, but in the long run, uh, the user need to have real value and, and uh, not to be overwhelmed by the technology. Okay, so a few examples. Um, uh, of course, mobile augmented reality. I think Malcolm already showed very quickly one slide of, of this kind of concept where you can sort of uh, view the world and, and see sort of augmented information overlaid on, on top, of the, top of the real world uh, objects. And here, um, sort of potential experiences that users might have. Of course, we will never know for sure because it really depends on the context and the user's mood. And that's, that's the tough part of, of, of exploring these user experiences, trying to design for them is that they are really sort of volatile. So it really depends on many things. But still, as designers, we can try to look at sort of these kind of main, uh, main uh, uh, possible main uh, experience that users might have. And we should also understand what, what are the uh, possible uh, negative experiences. So for example, this mobile augmented reality, we might have really nice sort of surprising elements in the environment we didn't know of. Um, we become aware in a new way of about our surroundings. In case uh, we are able to sort of tag some object in the environment ourselves with these solutions, then sort of it supports our creativity. On the other hand, users might feel over overwhelmed by these systems and they sort of quite feel uh, confused about sort of how lots of, uh, if there is too much of this digital information um, in, in, the, in the environment. So both um, uh, uh, positive and negatives uh, uh, are, are possible. So this is a system uh, example we've been working on together with Nokia Research Center. It's an, uh, it's an sort of like a, a system where you can hide, uh, where, you, where, you, where you can put uh, virtual objects in the space. You don't see them, but you will feel them in, with the gloves. You will give, uh, you will gain, uh, the user will gain uh, both uh, haptic and auditive uh, feedback from uh, touching the objects in the, in the environment. And it's actually, we ran a study last, last summer about this. And, uh, for most part, people were quite delighted about exploring this environment. They really had fun and they felt it was a playful experience. But it was also confusing for them, especially at first, because they didn't necessarily understand what's going on there. They didn't necessarily find the objects and, and, or they found them, but at some point, they, because if they were also able to move them from a location to another. Uh, so in some cases, for example, they dropped the objects and then they were really confused. They didn't see them and so So it was, it was kind of like an interesting, interesting uh, experiment with both, uh, again, both positive and negative ex user experiences. Another uh, system we are currently working on is this social mobile devices where people who are located in the same space um, use their mobile devices and the devices start talking to each other and, and they sort of suggest new activities uh, for, the, for the people to do together. So it's sort of uh, with the intention of enhancing the human connectedness in, the, in this sort of pr proximate uh, usage situations. 
So for example, there in the picture, people might be running in the park and when they come close past each other, they could, uh, they could actually, um, the system could suggest that, hey, why don't you talk to this guy because you sort of passed each other every day this week. So, so it, could, it could become um, kind of a new, new way of getting to know people. Again, uh, positive experiences, certainly um, that's of course why we, why we started studying this. We believe that it could uh, increase connectedness. Uh, it will sort of like satisfy people's curiosity. It will of, uh, offer some surprising elements, both in terms of meeting new people and also gaining some new, new uh, functionality. But at the same time, it could in some situation cause some embarrassment. Well, no, I don't really want to talk to this guy, but the system suggests that I should. So there might be some, some situations where this is really not something that the user wants. Or, or, or there might be some privacy concerns. The, the devices start talking to each other and, uh, and perhaps reveal some, some facts that the, the user in the end doesn't want, want them to reveal. So again, we need to uh, take these, these kind of um, uh, concerns into account. Another more practical, a practical um, uh, example is, uh, is uh, this research uh, on uh, no mobile newsmaking. So, so here the idea is that people can use uh, the, the mo their mobile phones to really make news stories, as well as we are, have been also investigating this sort of crowdsourcing, crowdsourcing uh, um, of this uh, mobile news uh, so that the people in the citizens can actually, actually contribute to this news making. So they are somewhere and the system sends them, sends them a location-based uh, assignments and then they are, well, of course, it's, they, are, they have freedom of choice not to, not to do the assignment, but in case they decide to do it, then they might be rewarded for, uh, by, that, by, by the newspaper. Uh, so again, positive experiences uh, might be efficiency, feeling of, okay, I'm really powerful. Uh, I might be really proud of kind of, for example, if I see my, uh, my photograph published in, in the newspaper, uh, I will feel creative. At the same time, there might be, at least in this professional situation, there might be some uh, mismatch with the professional identity because the mobile phone is not necessarily something that, for example, a professional photographer will, will want to uh, identify with. Again, in some cases, uh, this location awareness, people might feel that it might break their privacy. Even though they have given the permission to be located, they might still feel like, okay, I don't really want, to, want the, the news, newsroom to know where I am. And uh, my last example here is something we worked on. Um, um, again, this, this tangible everyday objects is, is one, one way in ubiquitous systems to, to, um, to provide new experiences. In this case, it's we provided this sort of soft toy uh, to children and their parents who are remotely located. And um, so they could actually hug the teddy bear and the uh, parent would feel it and the vice versa. So they could be connected to each other through these familiar objects. And whereas certainly the idea and our aim was to, uh, to provide these uh, experiences of care and connectedness and love between parents and children. But there was also some confusion because the children, uh, especially small children, they don't necessarily understand that this, uh, this uh, physical device sort of represents the connection to the parents. So there are some, certainly some concerns there. Okay, so just uh, some examples to show the potentials of positive and, 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 and potentially ne negative experiences. So just to, uh, just to highlight a few sort of trends that I see in this user experience in ubiquitous systems. So first, perhaps, well, not surprisingly, I believe and I hope, <laughs> and I'm personally working on this, that we will uh, move towards uh, more human-centered design uh, and value-centered design of this, of this new system, not just focusing on the technology, but on the, on the human values and human needs. On the other hand, um, this sort of original, original vision of, of ubiquitous computing was to have this sort of calm technology hidden very much in the background. On the other hand, there are really lots of examples and of probably some of my examples of where, where actually the system is not supposed to be calm, but really engaged. And so it should really make me sort of like engage with the system. And, and this, is, uh, this would also give uh, sort of special experiences to the end user. Um, this distributed aspect, of course, it will still remain there, but at the same time, um, at the same time, uh, using the mobile device is certainly one strong option. And mobile device doesn't necessarily need to be a phone. It could be some other everyday object. So something that I can carry with me and something that is mobile and, and, and sort of um, feels personal to me. 
And also, uh, I think there are lots of the original ubiquitous system uh, examples where um, were sort of very individually used. Uh, so it's sort of I'm alone together with my technology, but now more and more we see that there are sort of these uh, systems that offer uh, a nice uh, uh, social experiences, so connecting um, people through different types of uh, ubiquitous technologies. So my final uh, uh, slide here is this uh, conclusion. Uh, so we should develop this new big with the systems. Of course, we have to understand the, the possibilities of technological solutions, but, that, but we should really focus on the user values and experiences. And that's, for example, what our workshop here during this week will, will work on, to look at the specific experiences and how we can produce those in, in systems that are designed for this smart city context. So we should understand, try to understand the potential positive and negative, uh, positive experiences, but also, of course, trying to avoid the negative experience. And of course, do this iterative design so that we can understand what kind of, what kind of concerns and, and, and uh, negative experiences also that users might have, and then, of course, try to avoid those. And if we really think about sort of product design and, and, and achieving market success, then, of course, this sort of experience-driven design and user-centered design approaches should be, should be applied. So that's my uh, end. Do we take some questions now? If Thank somebody has. Well. So All right. Oh, there's a question in the second row. Okay. Okay. Oh, this one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm uh, interested in. Uh, what of the, uh, how you value these trends? What is the most uh, <laughs> kind of trendy right now? Or okay, they what are is equal? What, what is the most trendy trend? Okay, um, oh, that's a good question and, and a very hard one. I don't, this is not a quantifiable uh, list. Um, uh, I, I would have really hard time to try and to say which one is the strongest or or, or the most important. Um, well, I guess the most important, I would say, is the first one. I mean, but that's just purely my personal opinion because this is my profession and I really try to always uh, advance this human-centered uh, viewpoint. But, um, but then again, um, all of them are really, I, I would say, they are important. I'm sure that somebody can sort of uh, invent the fifth or sixth trend. So this is something that I sort of pull together from the research I've been seeing recently. So. Sorry, I cannot give you any more specific uh, answer. Uh, if you have some, or do you have some suggestion? Yeah, if we have a little bit of time, I would like to kind of discuss uh, yeah. when uh, the second, the car, okay. what was yeah. the big idea of Mark Weiser's, yeah. yeah. uh, and you have in, uh, uh, engaging. Yeah. So thinking that compared to uh, gamification. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of touches yeah. the humans. Yes. One side, then the mm -hmm. social. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, uh, do you think it would be a kind of inflated already, or is it still a booming up? Which one, the, uh, the, the social the or social. okay? Social. No, I would, I would claim, or I would guess. <laughs> if I, I'm looking at my crystal ball. I, I would guess that it's, uh, it's, it's still booming. It, it will grow, I would say. But it, of course, doesn't sort of take away the importance of some of these very individual sort of uh, ways of, or, or, or sort of systems that are used individually. But I would, I would tend to believe that this sort of social aspect, it's very strong in, in human beings for the most of the time and for the most of people. So. I would say it's very strong, but this sort of like uh, calm and engaged, and that's why I didn't want to say that it's moving totally away from calm, because I think it's still important. There are certainly situations where this calmness is important, but also we see more and more this engaging, like you said, gamified uh, systems, playful experiences, and so on. So I think that is also still a quite a, a strong trend, and certainly I don't think that we are sort of at the end of it. So my name is Raja Halon. I am from uh, University of, of Oulu. I would like to ask, actually I came here because I'm very much interested in, in social inclusion. Mm -hmm. So this ICT is spreading everywhere and uh, also my form of ringing in the beginning so it only happened even if I try to shut it down. So I'm a kind of afraid of, of this word 
becoming too divided still. The, now, some of us are going straight forward and, and uh, in a very quick speed, but some of us are not. So I wanted to, this, this calm and engaging kind of thought came, gave this thought back to me, this mm -hmm. engaging all, or, or do, you, do you ever raise this social inclusion, mm -hmm. how to take kind of include all people, not yeah. all those, not all your bright ones, mm -hmm. but also <laughs> others? Yeah, thanks. That's a very good, uh, very good point, of course. I, I think we, as technology de developers, we should absolutely think about this so social inclusion. Of course, in many cases, uh, we start with a specific user group, and, and of course, it's not always everyone. And, uh, but I think there's also a lot of research. I'm personally not so much uh, myself focusing on this social inclusion as a research angle, but there are people in the world, luckily, who are doing that. And I think that um, understanding the human needs in when we start developing new systems will hopefully bring us to this direction. But of course, I think there will always be some systems that are not for everyone, and, and hopefully then there, are, uh, then there are systems and technologies that can be used, used by all, or at least hopefully most of the humankind. But it's a good and very difficult question as well. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Kaisa.